And that was Thought for the Day with uh, Canon Angela Tilby. The time is seven minutes to eight. And we stay on uh, Angela's theme now because you've heard a lot of the paedophile information exchange in the last few days. It is to say the least, unlikely that such a group could operate today. But journalists have been peering into its past. More details have emerged about the links between it and the civil liberties organisation that Harriet Harman and others uh, worked for in the 1970s. Our man, Tom Bateman, has tracked down the then chairman of the Paedophile Information Exchange, Tom O'Carroll, and uh, Tom Bateman is with me. Tom, tell us a little more about him. Well, Tom O'Carroll was the chair of the Paedophile Information Exchange throughout the late 1970s, running a group that called for the age of consent to be lowered to 10 and lobbied MPs for a change in the law. Now, O'Carroll himself was convicted in 1981 for conspiracy to corrupt public morals. In 2006, he was jailed for two and a half years for distributing indecent images of children. But it is now clear that he sat on a subcommittee of the National Council for Civil Civil Liberties, its Gay Rights Committee, in the late 1970s. Now, we spoke to O'Carroll last night and he confirmed this, saying that he attended the committee regularly during the period. The minutes show that there were a variety of discussions at this group over the years about the paedophile information exchange. Now, O'Carroll says that none of the three figures named by the Daily Mail sat on this committee. Uh, He says he never met Harriet Harman at all, but did once speak to Patricia Hewitt very briefly. Of course, she was later to become Labour Health Secretary uh, and was then General Secretary of the NCCL. He spoke to her at a conference in Sheffield in 1978 and says that she was opposed to his group being involved with the NCCL. I spoke to her when we were just going up a floor or two in a lift and she was somewhat frosty. And um, I, I said something to her, I think it was a pleasantry, and she didn't take it that way, and she said that I'd been rude to her afterwards, which I hadn't been. My impression was that she simply uh, had great distaste for being in, in the same lift as me. Well, we've tried to contact Patricia Hewitt, but she's understood to be currently overseas. Yesterday, Harriet Harman said that she very much regretted, of course, what she called a vile organisation had ever existed and that it had anything to do with the NCCL and said that it didn't affect her work at the council. Now, last night in a statement, her husband, Jack Dromey, who was also prominent in the NCCL at the time, told us that he took on the paedophile information exchange in 1976 and stopped them bringing what he called a loathsome motion on paedophile rights to the group's AGM uh, back in 1976. But O'Carroll says that there were other radical groups that were still active in the NCCL that did support Pi. As a result, he says, he saw no active attempt to remove him from the committee that he attended. Really, they didn't do much to oppose Pi's presence, in my view, because there were these other liberal forces, or radical forces, within NCL. The support didn't come from Harman and Co., But it was there. The Gay Liberation Front was very radical. And at that time, uh, Harmon and Patricia Hewitt couldn't just kick out Pi. Well, they could. uh, Both tried, but they didn't even try. And the reason they didn't try is they didn't want to rock the boat because their careers within NCCL depended on them not rocking the boat too much. Well, that is emphatically denied. Jack Dromey says that no one will believe a man like Tom O'Carroll, a convicted paedophile. He and Harriet Harman say that Pi had been completely marginalised within the NCCL after 1976 and that they had no influence on the leadership, that there were, they say, many, many subcommittees at the group. Anna Coote is also a former NCCL executive member who spoke to the BBC last night. We had a lot more important things to do. It was not an influential organisation. It did not have any influence. It did not have any status. And that was the way it was. Hmm. Tom Bateman there taking us through a bit of 1970s history. We'll deconstruct some of that with uh, Tessa Jowell at about quarter past, at about quarter past eight.